If you were a kid that grew up in Canada in the 80s and 90s, or maybe you're in the States and you had Nickelodeon, you might recognize the name Fred Pennard. Fred's big song was, the cat came back the very next day. Well, the cat came back, thought he was a goner, but the cat came back, he just couldn't stay away. And in this case, the cat is Jessica Penne. For Jessica Penne, she hasn't fought in years. Years! She had that wild USADA suspension that was not really her fault, kind of. It was weird. She, she had fights booked. She was supposed to fight Jody Escabel a few years ago. She was also supposed to fight Hannah Goldie not that long ago. They rebooked it for this card. Goldie couldn't make it. Originally tested positive for COVID. She's out this week as well. In steps the Mexican-Canadian Lupita Lupi Godinez and Matt... I'm telling you, for this week, I watched a lot of tape that was outside of the UFC, outside of the Bellators and the big promotions of the world. Now, for Loopy, her last fight was over with LFA. Before that, with BTC, right up here in Canada. And listen, I'm not lying about this. This is the prospect that I'm most excited to watch on this card. Holy smokes, have I been impressed by Loopy Godinez. She does so many things well in the cage. And if you wanted to get a good idea of how she matches up in a fight like this. And I'm going to hand it over to you when we talk about Jessica Penny because oh, we just got done talking about Jessica Penny where she's supposed to fight Goldie. But Jessica Penny early on, good striker, very well-rounded, but her grappling was really she her does. bread and butter. And for Lupe Godinez in her last fight, it was for the LFA strawweight title, and she fought a fighter that I know the UFC wishes they had in Vanessa Demopoulos. And we've seen her with LFA, and we've seen her with some of the bigger promotions, bigger regional promotions. We saw her on Contender Series. And it just never seems to be the right moment for Vanessa Demopoulos. But what's she good at? Some of the same things that Jessica Penne is good at. And Lupe Godina has boxed her ears in in the first three rounds. Forget about the fourth and the fifth. And I did think that Lupe won the fight. I actually scored one of the rounds 10-8 for Godinez in that original three-round uh, set. But holy smokes, really good footwork. Comes out of Titan MMA in Vancouver. She's been training a little bit in Colorado for this one. Her boxing is so good. You go back and watch the BTC fight, her second to last fight. She took on a recognizable name who came in on short notice and Lindsay Garbat. And listen, kudos to Lindsay. She's always there for a fight. She's taken on really good competition and her cardio is great. Loopy looked like she hadn't even been in a fight at the end of it. Barely a scratch on her face. Now, the Vanessa Demopoulos one, look at a side by side of both of their faces. They had a war. But for Godinez, good takedown defense. When she was on top or if she ever got into any bad spot, she was able to get out of them. Vanessa Demopoulos put her in that crazy kind of triangle that she got Sam Hughes in. Godinez was able to get out of it. Really, really liked the game of, again, the Canadian-Mexican fighter that's fought for Combate in the past, that fought for LFA, the former champ. It's a really tough ass to come in on short notice and take on such a big name like Jessica Penne. It'll be really interesting to see what Jessica Penne even looks like in this fight. Is it a tough ass, Craig? Now, I know we like to say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. So okay. I'm just going to throw out some facts. I'm just going to throw out a few things that we know are true. It's been three years and 11 months since the last time Jessica Penne has been in a cage. No lies detected. I'm glad we can all agree. She lost to Danielle Taylor. Now, my problem is that Danielle Taylor, along with some of the names you had mentioned, like Hannah Cyphers, like Hannah Goldie, those are what you kind of consider those entry-level UFC names. Is oh, we have this prospect, that's a good person for them to fight in their UFC debut. The fact that Jessica Panay has a loss to one of those types of fighters almost four years ago is a little bit concerning. And Jessica Panay, it's kind of weird. Now, I'm going to compare her to uh, just a lot of different fighters in this video, so please bear with me. I'm going to compare her a little bit to Arturo Gatti, because Jessica Panay... It seemed like she did a lot of the great things in her career before we ever really get to see her at the greatest point of her career. We saw, at least the UFC tenure, that's kind of post-prime Jessica Panay, if you will. Her prime was spent in Invicta at Atomweight. So now we're dealing with a fighter who wasn't really in their prime in their UFC run, and now they're four years removed from even that. I'm just, I'm A, very confused as to why the UFC still has Jessica Panay, if I'm being very honest. I understand they do like her for her part outside of the cage. She does some work with Angela Hill and breaking down fights. I understand all that. But to me, she was kind of a retired fighter for these last four and a half years. When you think of Jessica Panay, I didn't really think of her as the fighter. I thought of her as the training partner at Alliance, as the ESPN breakdown host. I never really thought of her as a fighter. And the fact that she's going to be going in there with for Lupita Godinez, here's the thing. You talk about the Vanessa Demopoulos fight. LFA themselves was promoting that as one of their fight of the years for last year. So that just tells you how good that fight was. We're not just blowing smoke at that fight. Like, it was a very, very high level contest. I, that, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm dead serious. It was, this is A, like, again, normally it's one side, one side, at the end we come in. 
It's a bad fight for Panay. I'm very excited to see Lupi Godinez in this fight. And I think it's a really big opportunity to almost have a coming out party. The fight against Goldie would have been a little more low risk for Penne. Because again, with Goldie, it's just a lot, a lot, a lot of volume. She's a really good striker, in and out. She's kind of short for the division. And again, for Penne, not one of the bigger fighters. For Godinez, actually at a height disadvantage in this fight, which is going to happen. The reach in favor of Penne. Penne was one of those longer, kind of lankier Jeez. fighters at, at Adam weight. So it'll be interesting to see, again, what we get. Because for Penne... You're originally going to be taking on a volume striker. Now you get a power puncher. For Godinez, really good footwork, really good movement on the feet, and a really crisp one-two. It's always one-two and going and, forward and a really good jab. And too. one thing that we've seen from Jessica Penne is if you pressure her, she will back up. She's like Tyron Woodley after he lost the belt. You don't really have to do much to get her up against the cage. And the issue is, where does Jessica Penne get finished at? Look at the Ioana fight. Look at the Jessica Andrade fight. Those two fighters, now yes, those two fighters are far better than either ones in this division right now, but still. Those two fighters were able to get Penne up against the cage. And one thing Penne does, Anthony Smith does it too, even though I think he's a good MMA striker. I hate it when fighters get their back up against the cage, put their hands up like this, and just try to throw front, front kicks to keep their opponents away from them. That is not an effective technique of damaging your opponent or getting your back off the cage. That is pretty much a submissive position saying like, hey, get away from me. And that's some place that Jessica Penne finds herself often in her fights. She can't get backed up against the cage and against a power puncher like Godinez. I do see this fight going similar to the Andrade fight. It might not be the first round TKO like we saw in Jessica Andrade's ability to beat Penne, but it will be a, you're going to get backed up, Penny's going to have her back into the cage, and she's going to be eating shots through this fight. If you look at it, I mean, Godina has almost knocked out Demopolis in the second round to the point where she was kind of stumbling around. At the end of the round, she like had a hard time getting back to her corner. She actually did look all right. The commentary milked it a little bit. For Godina is taking this fight on just day's notice. She opened a minus 185 favorite. It dropped. It went back up. She's now a minus 292. So it does scare me away from it because of the odds. They're a little silly. But for Penne, open a plus 155. She's now a plus 230. There is some money coming in on Penne at this point. So it'll be interesting to see where we are on Saturday with Fight Name Picks question mark kicks. But I tip my hand early. I've been this excited about a prospect in a while. And it was a pleasure to go back and watch the tape study. 903 total topology votes. 84% Godinez. 87% by decision. I will throw the caveat out there. This is just like Jarjus Dano and Jorgen Castro. Because for Dano, Here's the he'd been out for so long. He lost a fight. Then he fought Christian Colombo to a draw. Because Colombo, you know, lost a point early. It's, it's a weird fight. I'm assuming Jessica Penne has been refreshed and rejuvenated over the time off. Do I expect the same fighter that fought Michelle Waters into a fight of the year? No. But it should make it interesting. I, I think Penne's a good fighter, you know, in general. But man... Loopy Godin is a good fighter. Craig, you're putting out fires you don't have to put out right now. Here's the thing. Jarjus and Jorgen are heavyweights. That can happen. You can land a lucky shot. Jessica Penne can't land a lucky knockout on Godinez. She doesn't have that kind of power. And she doesn't have the submission game where, oh, it's on the mat automatically I favor Penne to such a degree that I think she's going to submit her. I don't see her getting those Hail Mary type techniques in this fight. And I do see this being fairly one-sided for Godinez. Great camps. Angela Hill versus Rose Namajunas and what? Claire Guthrie. There Some interesting go. ones for Godinez. But yeah, we're both going with Godinez in this fight. It's not a Canadian thing. It's not even a Mexican thing. It's a North American thing, Matt. I'm really looking forward to this fight. It should be a great card. We have a great main event with Robert Whitaker taking on Kelvin Gastelum. Finally, in our main events, keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. And as we always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.